Being president of the PGA was actually a lot of fun. First of all, Vance Van Petten is such a remarkable leader of this guild that he really makes it easy for the presidents. You know, uh, when something comes to you, it doesn't come to you in its raw state. It comes to you as something that he's already thought about. He can convey to you what the different sides are. Um, it, he's just an amazing leader. And so he made it very easy for me. And, and finally, you know, I felt I had a mandate when I was president, first of all, to increase the profile of the guild in the industry because we, people didn't really know about us and they didn't really know what we were doing. And I, I wanted to make sure that people saw us, you know, as a very positive uh, force in the industry. And, um, you know, we were laying the groundwork for the things we could later do because remember, we're not a union. We cannot go out on strike. There's no collective bargaining. You know, we don't have power, as they call it, like the other unions, but we have the power of doing good. And we have the power of being able to say the truth. And that turned out to be a very interesting um, and, 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 and wonderful experience for me. And there were times, you know, there was a, one of the networks that does um, unscripted was not treating its employees very well. And we were able to sit down with the president of that organization and just lay out for him, not in a confrontational way, but in a way that was just straightforward to say, you know, are you aware that this is what's going on? And by the way, he was appalled. He didn't know. And he made changes starting that day. So there are things we can do in terms of appealing to the conscience of people and also bringing together the various forces in the industry. And I felt that was my mandate. And also my mandate was to really think about what the future of the Guild was going to be. And one of them was the Produced By Conference. You know, we, we had a retreat very early uh, when I was president, and this was one of the ideas that came up. And at first it was, you know, it seemed like a pretty big thing. You know, could we do this? And everybody was skeptical, except Vance, by the way, who just believed from the first second it was going to work. Um, but that first year was pretty scary, right down to the very last day. We didn't know if we were going to sell all the tickets. It was, it, was, it was quite a risk that we took, and I'm so glad that we did because it really worked out. Well, the thing I love about the producers, Mark, is that it exemplifies what we can do as a trade organization instead of a union. We could not compel the studios to let us decide who gets the credit. So instead we said, okay, why don't we give this thing which signifies that somebody really did the work? Because just in human nature, if some people have it and some people don't, everybody's going to want it. And the only way you're going to get it is if you do the things necessary. And that's just how it's turned out. That finally that little signifier that really says, oh, this was the person who was really responsible for what went on in this film, turns out to be so important. And by the way, took off so fast in the business. I think we were all surprised. And uh, you know, I, I am so grateful to all the studios who came on board because by the way, we were in negotiations with them for years over all sorts of different ways to give us the, 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 the power to bestow credits and they didn't want to do that. And finally, this was the kind of compromise that I think is finally going to achieve the end we wanted anyway, because in the end, no one's going to want that producer credit unless they get that PGA mark. That was going to take a couple more years, but that's where it's going to be. And so we did that without the use of force, without being adversarial, just by being a force for good in the industry. I think in this world where it's so difficult, you just have to do your job as well as you possibly can. That's all. The rest is out of your control. You know, you have to have a story that's compelling and you have to tell it in a compelling way. And I think most of what I do when I advise people about pitching is really about the process of pitching, which is not just how you are in the room, but how you talk about your story. I mean, you know, what we see over and over again is that people don't really understand the difference between a real life story and a movie story. And, and it's very difficult. Look, I've, I've done history type film several times, and it's very difficult to take a true life story and turn it into a movie story. They're different things, okay? It's funny, there's a, there's a famous saying in Italian which translated is, facts are the enemies of truth. And in a way, sometimes sticking to what actually happened doesn't necessarily convey what's at the heart of the story. You have to be able to understand what's the engine of this story, 
regardless of what really happened. Um, and by the way, this is why you see so many people get in trouble today. You know, we, we live in a very critical time when people tell true life stories and you know, they get knocked for anything they changed. Look what happened with Selma, which I thought was really unfair. Um, it happened with A Beautiful Mind. It happens with every film that comes out that purports to be a true story. You're going to find that, oh my God, it's a movie. It's not a documentary. And you know, what do you do? It's like movies have rules of storytelling that you have to follow in order to make them work. And you know, the great answer is always just go back to Shakespeare, who was the worst historian in history. And we still love his plays. You know, um, the sad part is if somehow movies or television shows become the repository of history in a culture. They shouldn't be. A movie is an interpretation of real events or fictional events, and that's the way it should be. When Edswick and I thought about doing 30-something, we were quite flummoxed by the idea because it didn't fit into any genre, and we were scared of that. And we kept saying, but what do you do? It's like, this is just people we know. We're telling stories of people we know. And it took actually several days of kind of laying them out and saying, OK, that's a dramatic story. This is a guy who's afraid of commitment, and it would go like this. And you know, you know, here's a couple that just got together, and they had a baby, and they want to be kids themselves, but they need to grow up and understand how you tell that story. But honestly, you know, we had no idea if anyone would be interested in that at all. And we went into ABC. And we sit in a room, and everyone in the room is our age, and one of them is pregnant, and the other just had a kid, and I'm sitting there going, oh my god, this is our demographic, you know? And we tell them this story, and at first they're looking at us blankly, and then they're going, oh, oh, you know, that's kind of, oh, oh, that's interesting. And by the end of the meeting, there was this kind of awkward silence, and they said, well, let us think about it. And Ed and I walked out, and we got to the elevator, and Ed realized that he had left his keys on the side table in the office, and he had to go back to the office to get his keys. And he walked in, and they said, oh, Ed, we want to do it. They had just like taken a minute. They all had to sort of consult with each other and go, do you like this as much as we do? And, you know, and so we kind of sold it kind of half in the room there. But that was a surprise. You know? um, the hardest pitches for me are when you're talking to someone who's absolutely unresponsive who just, you know, uh, the expression I use sometimes is your words fall out of your mouth and just fall on the ground. And, and you know, you, 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 pitching is a form, it's certainly a presentation, it, it's a performance, do you know what I mean? And you need some feedback from the other person. I remember the first time I met Brandon Tartikoff way, way back in the 80s when he was running NBC, I went in to pitch a project. And Brandon was one of those people, very taciturn, no expression on his face, didn't say anything. And I'm telling this story, and I'm going on, and I'm, it's like sweat is like pouring off my face. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm bombing so bad because there's nothing coming back from him. And then I'm finished. And he goes, oh, that's really good. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> you know, so. You can't always tell. I mean, that's the thing I say to people, is that you have to be willing, really, to generate that enthusiasm yourself. Because finally, that's what it's about. Pitching is about, let me put it a different way. In our business, our job is to give an experience to an audience, usually an emotional experience. It can be sadness, it can be comedy, it can be adrenaline, it can be fear, whatever it is, okay? That's our job, is to give that experience. When you're pitching, you have to convey what that experience is going to be to the executive in the room. That's what they want. And yet, it's natural for us to be nervous and shy and to hold back the emotions we feel. But in fact, that's the worst thing you can do when you're pitching. You must convey the thing you love about this, the life of it, to the people in the room so that they can get it. Otherwise, they don't know what you're really talking about. So that's always a leap of faith.